The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates, and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Okay, so um, welcome everyone to the Maroon and White Pod, and I'm delighted to be joined today um, by Galwick Senior Komogi, Captain Roisin Black. How are you, Roisin? Great, now you're all good now, yeah. And yourself? So you're up in Crow Park at the minute for the launch of the championship? Yeah, um, just coming towards the end of it now. So yeah, we had a busy morning with all the photos and interviews. So yeah, it was lovely. So that's it's lovely to be up there on that. It's kind of sometimes it's nerve wracking, but it's like you have to do it, don't you? You have to talk to kind of press and you have to get the photos out of the way. But it is, it's lovely to meet the other girls and see, yeah. you know, did you get any yeah. tips off? The- <laughs> uh, we weren't really sharing tips now. Um, no, I was lovely <laughs> to meet them now in fairness. And, you know, like, like you don't really get to meet them unless yeah. you're paying so it's a nice opportunity you know nice relaxed environment <laughs> yeah well that's that's it it has to be done but I suppose Roisin like it's it's a massive honor for you um to become like a senior captain of your county and coming from the Ormore Mary Club but tell us how it came about that you became captain for your county um yeah no it is a huge honor and um I'm delighted to be the captain of a, a great bunch of girls um yeah no I suppose Cahill just approached me at one training session and asked me and you know I was honored and delighted that he did um but in saying that like we have a whole team of leaders so it you know eases it for me you know we have great leaders on the pitch um so yeah no just honored to um lead the girls yeah it is a great honor and I suppose you play fullback as well and Shauna Healy your predecessor in in fullback and uh, captain as well and she had great news actually during the week so Delighted mm-hmm. for her, she had a little yeah. baby boy. Yeah. So um, it is, it is a huge honour. But like you said, there's plenty of leaders around the pitch, but it's just that extra honour. Do you find at times, can it be a little bit pressurised or do you let it bother you at all? Um, no, to be honest, like, um, you know, there's great girls that bounce off there, like um, like the likes of Carrie Dolan, you know, Neve Hanafy and Dreville Higgins. So like, you know, any questions or anything, you know, I always just talk to them as well. Yeah. So um, no, it's it's nice and relaxed, to be fair. Yeah. Like a little kind of sisterhood. Yeah, <laughs> the, it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is um, nice to bounce off. But yeah, I, yeah. I presume your family are very proud of that honour that you're after receiving, because I know your family is, and, and I'm sure they, they certainly are proud of you for that. So um, just from us all, I suppose, in, in Galway Kamogi, we're delighted for you that you have that honour and you. hopefully it'll bring much success. So I suppose um, you had an injury there in the league final, which it was probably a turning point. I think, um, you know, myself and Martina Harkey that does this uh, pod with me. I'm missing my sidekick today now, or I'm missing the bit of insults going over and back in the bit of jarring, but like we were talking and it was kind of, it was a big turning point we feel in the league final when you went off injured. Um, how are you now? H- how are you? Um, yeah, no, I'm recovering well now at the moment and easing my way back into it. So um, please God, yeah, and I'll be hopefully back for championship. Um, but yeah, no, we've great physios who are taking care of us. So um, I'm in good hands. So yeah, yeah it's, it's great to get the, the good physios and the recovery kind of as well, which is badly yeah. needed. And I yeah, sometimes exactly. find, you know, because Camogie isn't obviously, it's not professional, but it's it's almost like it is a professional setup, you know, at times, but you still have to get up the next morning and go to work. Like that's that's the one thing about, you know, recovery. It is like, you know, if you're a nurse or a doctor or a teacher, or a guard or whatever you are, you have to get up in the morning and, and go to work. Like, so um, yeah. the fact that you have great kind of physio and background in that, it's it's good yeah. to get that, like, Absolutely. or a night trip to the... And not trip to the sea down in Renville. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm I'm lucky beside Renville, so I'll be down. I'm down there a good bit. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, we all have full time jobs, and you know, it has its pros and cons. You know, I'm a teacher, so I go into a classroom, and you know, I have to perform in there as well, I suppose. And you know, regard, you know, it takes your mind off the sport as well. You know, um, it's a healthy kind of combination of it. Yeah. Um, you're not always thinking of the sport and that's your time off and you know you have to develop in that as well so um yeah like you said we're in great hands and it's coming along well now yeah yeah it is great actually the the teaching profession we had Anya Keen on before and she was going on about like teaching is it's a great profession in that if you're kind of a sports person that you do get the couple of months after in the summer and here and there like it is it is great so I'd say there'll be an influx of teachers as well from <laughs> kind of county setups and stuff like that but that's that's yeah. we're on the wind down I don't know about you yeah. but we're definitely on the wind down uh, we've got a few weeks left to go so we're <laughs> I'm a primary school teacher so yeah what classes are you teaching and do you want to give um, them a shout out 
Yeah, no, yeah, uh, I'm in Scholar or more, so I have fifth and sixth class girls. So, um, yeah, no, we have a great bunch of girls in our school and they're camogie mad as well. So, it's, yeah. yeah, it's nice. Yeah. And I'm sure they're looking up to you big time now, like, you know, their, their teacher is the go, oh, senior camogie captain. That's brilliant. I suppose it, it brings me on as well. Um, you know, there's a new influx of players coming through, um, some retired, some kind of left of their own accord. And there's there's a kind of a, a mashup between youth and, and new players. How do you find that you're merging together or is there any kind of standouts coming in? I know that you have um, you have a new girl that has joined and she really made an impact on the league final. And I know lots of people are saying, oh, geez, why didn't they bring her on earlier? But obviously she just joined and... You, you can't just bring on players, bring them in, you know, I suppose if they hadn't been there since the beginning and you have to be fair to everybody that was at training already. But yeah, what's happening? Is there a new blood or um, how's that going at training? Um, yeah, do you know, like we, it's, Cahill's great now that he's got a load of girls uh, game time during the league and it was a great learning curve for us as well because, um, you know, without the youth, we wouldn't be developing them. Um, so yeah. it's very important to keep bringing them in. Um, you know, the likes of Ava Crow had a brilliant game in the league final. Um, Ali Heslin's really stepped up as well. Um, you know, and like you said, yeah, Need Mallon as well. You know, it's great to have all these girls involved and and it brings great competition to um, the team as well and gives Cahill and management a really hard job to pick a team. Um, but you know, everyone who started deserved their spot and trained really hard in the league. And, you know, it's just about keeping that up now for championship. And yeah. there's lots of girls putting their hands up now for championship spots. So it's going to be really, really tough for the management to pick. And yeah, that's it's always great. good though. It's a bit of healthy, healthy competition. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, no one has their spot secured down. So it really is all up for grabs. And that's what you want in a team, you know. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So. No, because it, it like it it does make because if you know that oh you're guaranteed your spot or she's guaranteed the spot and it's always good when you don't really know like and yeah. especially when you have new girls that you mentioned they're coming in and they've kind of gone up through the ranks uh, uh, some of them have nearly just gone from minor straight to intermediate and they won the intermediate so they kind of had no choice in it to be yeah um, but to be like fast tracked in but here they're they're making their they're making their way nicely along and you know merging with the you know more experienced players there like Aoife Donahue and the girls you know and yeah. If, to see Neve Kilkenny back in the fold again yeah no it's great it's a great boost and you know it's you know we're we all look up to her and it's um you know she's a great boost to the team as well and brings great experience so um yeah it's great to have her back on board as well and you've a lot of Neves and you've a lot of Neves <laughs> in the panel how are you doing Hannah Flea and <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? I suppose yeah we'd all have to call them different yeah. names um yeah maybe I know I think the league final there when the, all the Neves came on it was funny um but yeah no it's it's a funny one at the amount of them you on the team to, you'd have to go by surnames or think you're seriously yeah. <laughs> seriously good on yeah it. But um, I suppose the the group you've seen the group obviously for your championship. Is there you're away for a couple and home to a few? I, I wrote down that you're away to Dublin to start. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that that'd be an easy thing, but it's it's one that you'd be hoping to win. Obviously, I suppose if you're if you're going to try and win the championship, you're going to try and win them all. But um, mm. in terms of preparation, like it's in a couple of weeks. It's it's quite quick. You know the the championship. Um, how how are preparations going? Where are you now? Without giving away too much, obviously, kind of where are you now in terms of preparation? I know you had two weeks off after the league. Yeah, um, yeah, no, we were, we're just focusing on Dublin at the moment, and you know they're coming after a great league um, victory in Division Two, so they're going to be all guns blazing coming to us as well. I know we're traveling up there to them, but um, no training is very competitive at the moment. You know everyone's going well, and. Yeah, you know, we're in we're in great hands of Cahill, Robbie, um, all the management team as well. So um yeah, we won't feel it coming now. It's another just over two weeks um yeah. until the first round and it'll come quick and fast because with three uh, matches in a row, then a break and then two. So yeah, once we're into the tick of it, yeah. it'll go very quick. And it does like do you know the way this kind of rang up years ago? It was literally go we used to always kind of just be straight into a semi-final. There's obviously more games now. Um and and that, but like we'd say you're you're away to Dublin, like you said, it'll bring on the panel though, because obviously you'd be hoping certainly that nobody will be getting injured. Do you know what I mean? But because the games are so thick and fast that it really is a panel affair, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And 
you know, you, you just don't know what's going to happen in matches, you know, girls could go down or different things could happen. So we really have to have like, a, you know, our panel is great that we have such depth in it and that anyone can be called upon. And the girls all know that themselves that like every, every position's up for grabs. So, um, and that girls coming on are just as important as the girls starting. Um, you know, we really do need everyone driving forward for this championship and pushing each other on because that's how we're going to improve and get better. Yeah, oh, for sure. And I know with, with the league campaign, it was kind of, you were unlucky as well. Like, but I think Tip were trying to finally get that monkey off their back. They were over 20 years without any silverware and we were kind of going for three in a row. And Galway have been very, very successful in the league campaign and obviously in the championship in the latter years. Like, um, But who do you think is kind of, who are, who do you think are the kind of dark horses? Um, yeah, like it's it's really up for grabs this year. Like, um, mm. you know, other years it probably would have been like the top three teams, but this year and you know, last year, like it's wide open. Um, you know, you have the likes of Dublin, Wexford, who were, you know, got to the league finals as well, and you know, they're not going to fear us at all. Um, coming into the championship games as well, and you know, we've Cork as well, and you know, I could list off everyone, I suppose, but yeah. um you know, the level of Camogie has really increased and the competition as well. Like it's, it's every game is a hard game as well. So like we really can't take anyone for granted and no one's going to fear Galway, you know. So we really have to um make sure we bring our A game to all the matches. Yeah, because sometimes when you're when you're on top, everyone wants you down and when you're down, they want mm-hmm. you up, but they don't want you up for too long. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like a game of cat and mouse. But I do think it is good for Camogie and, um, that there's kind of different names on cups now. It's it's not just the like for years there it was kind of Cork Kilkenny, Cork Kilkenny, Galway turning in with an odd one, you know, in the latter years. Um Tipperary there for a while. Wexford won it in like a couple in a row as well. Um and it is, it's good for Camogie to see them, you know, the oh. other teams coming through. Um with the intermediates, then you know, the the teams sometimes I find that they come up intermediate and they're nearly gone down as quick. Mm-hmm. So what do you think is happening there or like I know that the gap the gap is still quite large between intermediate and senior it's a fair jump do you know um mm-hmm. for even for Galway for a second team but how do you think we could help that you know in the promotion of the game what's your what's your opinion on it? we're not going to find an answer today but yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot yeah um yeah I know like I suppose you know we're lucky in Galway that we have an intermediate team and you know it's great for those girls you know they strive to be on the senior team as well so like it's a great I suppose uh, stepping stone to get into the seniors so um you know we've brought up great players there now um from the intermediate team as well um I suppose to improve it you know to bridge the gap is I suppose it kind of has to look at the county itself you know what resources can they give to that team um how can they improve them you know SNC um you know nutrition wise and just even getting pitches and all that and getting the interest in the club in the county as well and you know making girls to want to have the desire to play for the county and put on the jersey and you know strive to win the intermediate and championship and go on to senior and I suppose playing bigger games and like I know it's great now that the senior a lot of the monster was double headers with the men as well yeah the integration is good yeah yeah so things like that could definitely you know want girls to play and you know bridge that gap between intermediate and senior as well and definitely with the integration of the other because uh, again myself and Martina we've chatted about this on the pod for a couple of different times that not as many will go to the Camogie match that's just the way it is but it's more women trying to support women because we'd mm-hmm. go to a hurling match quicker than we'd go to a Camogie match yeah. just because the atmosphere might be a little bit different or, or whatever We or maybe it's just all in our heads but we're trying to kind of get girls to support girls mm-hmm. kind of uh, which brings me on to the next topic then, which is hot on the thing, the skirts versus the shorts brigade, mm-hmm. we'll call it. Um, like what's what's your take on it? You're obviously playing inter-county now, you're at the highest level, you're still mm-hmm. playing club, obviously. Um, what what's the consensus among the group? Yeah, it, well, we we're actually just having a chat about it here, all the um representatives of the teams, and you know, yeah. there's some girls who are in favor of it, and there's some girls who aren't in favor, of it, so it's interesting in that aspect. Um Personally, myself now, I would love to wear the shorts. Um, shorts, yeah. That's, that's a personal one. Um, um, and yeah. is it just is it more for comfort routine? Is that or like 
Is yeah more, yeah more for comfort I suppose when we go training everyone's in shorts so it kind of has to yeah. look at that in an aspect um, I would never go and reach for a skirt going training no, um, no even I find in club as well you know everyone's wearing the shorts so if everyone's wearing the shorts in training it's I know we would prefer to have it in the matches as well but um yeah. you can see people different points of view as well it is one. it is funny because again we spoke about this before and um like the girls that I'm playing with and the girls in school that I'm training and obviously I'm in with the under 16s as mm. well and it's kind of, it's still 50 50 so it's like oh will someone get off the fence what do you yeah, want but yeah like girls that are playing at the minute like I'm I'm like you know obviously at training wear the shorts the whole time but we the league game the other day like it's it's there's a rule in now now I haven't fully read the absolute nitty-gritty of the new rules but that a ref can um give you a yellow card now for okay, not a yeah. skirt so I, there's it's different age groups and clubs now but yeah nobody will go for the skirt for training I mean if you're going down training you're going to whip out the shorts but yeah I suppose for the game but we've said it's kind of the Camogie Association's mark isn't it it's part of the uniform maybe the the skirts need to be tidied up a little bit or something or made a little bit more comfortable now they are a lot more comfortable than they were yeah <laughs> but, um, yeah yeah, they're just, I know. So it look at, we'll wait. We won't solve that today either. And, and we'll see how it goes. Um, what do you think of the new rules? Or have you have you kind of read up on the new rules? Um, I looked at them uh, briefly now. Um, I know there's different ones for um, the, cl- the C- C- club and the inter-county one, isn't there? Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, there's one on the shoulder. Bring the it shoulder. in. Bring it yeah. on. Now you're here. Um, you like the shoulder now. You're, <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm um, only joking, yeah. Yeah, no, I, was, I suppose in the full back line now, we wouldn't mind seeing the Oh, you have to use then. the shoulder or it's all over? It's in the Yeah, exactly. Shoulder. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the shoulder, I suppose it's, it's it's hard. It really does depend on the ref as well, I find. Um, yeah. Those rules. So, um, do you know, so sometimes he can go for you and sometimes he can go against you. So, um, I think that's the whole, the, the shoulder, like, at least now the shoulder is in, right? That it's shoulder to shoulder. We know that it's a shoulder. Obviously, if it's a high tackle, but like you said, referees. And also the virgin thing, it's like, oh my God, it's one day it's, yeah. it, it works for you. The next, you could have knocked yeah. something clean out and it and you get the free. It's a, it's, yeah. it's inconsistent enough, I suppose. But yeah. Yeah. I, I, to, yeah. Yeah. And like, I suppose it is very hard for a referee on the yeah. to see it from different angles. So whatever, I suppose, side he's on, it's, it's quite hard to see, but, um, yeah, no, I suppose we just have to make it more obvious, like no more than the hand pass now. We just have to make it more obvious in yeah. our, um, the action of it as well. And I suppose if you're, um, you know, going for the shoulder, you have to just make it more obvious. So I think that's just kind of the main thing we have to do for it. You'd um, in trouble if you make it more obvious for <laughs> <laughs> I know nah, I'm only joking no it is I think look at it's gone very physical and it's it's a physical game it's not for the faint-hearted now Camogie and um, yeah, yeah. I do think the shoulder will improve it because it'll stop a lot of the uh, you know the the freeze that you don't know what whether they're for or against you no more than that but I guess it is it is gone very physical and that's kind of the, the game has changed definitely in terms of physicality and strength and conditioning and stuff like that yeah. and with that because it's more physical, it will bring more injuries. That's just the nature of the game. I mean, if you're going in for tackles, there's a chance you're going to get injured every time. But yeah, you know, I suppose that's why again recovery is so important. And you know, yeah. but, so you're you're well off the fence anyway. You're for the skirts and for the shoulder. <laughs> well, I don't know about the skirts now, but um, oh no, not for the skirts, not, not for, the, for the shorts. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I just, you know what, anything that can make the game more enjoyable and more entertaining for people to watch, I'd be up for. Um, yeah, and you know, free flow of the game as well as what you want. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. the other rule then again, like it's it's different with club now and county and underage. The new unlimited amount of substitutions is good you know, in the in the club side of it. And I think it's is it up to eight now and the thing so nobody is safe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which yeah. Exactly it's then. probably good. And again, um I know like with trackers on and stuff, somebody may be taken off because they've actually outrun themselves. Do you know what I mean? So mm, sometimes yeah. you might see somebody taken off and you say, God, they didn't deserve to be taken off. But a lot of the, you know, the tracker and the IT now on the game, it's gone very, very technical. And you know, that kind of the technology side of it is probably helping the game. Yeah, absolutely. And 
you know, there are girls, there's lots of girls in the other team, you know, that will run themselves into the ground and they will empty the tanks for the team. Yeah. And that's what you want, like, and then you want girls coming fresh onto the pitch and yeah. given, um, you know, give they get their chance as well and prove why they should be on. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's great to see. And I know for club as well, it's great because, you know, you want to be bringing girls on. You know, there's many times where you bring five subs on and, you could really bring on more like so um yeah, yeah it's great and it'll keep more girls um involved as well I think on club side yeah, because um you know eight players coming on you know that's 23 girls you could be using and you know might not be the same 23 girls all the time so it definitely will you know keep the interest keep in fresh. clubs yeah, yeah and for girls you know growing up as well to see that you know I have a better chance of getting on the team as well or making an impact Definitely. And the fact as well that some clubs, um, I know we're going from club to county, but some clubs don't have the numbers. So I think it is good that they can continuously refresh with, uh, you know, unlimited subs now that it can be kind of a roll on, roll off. And anything that makes the game, you know, that bit better for, yeah. you know, and for dropout to stop the drop. We're trying to stop the drop and and, and all that. And I think this will help. Like, yeah. um, I suppose your aspirations, we know it's to win the All-Ireland Um um, any news in the camp or like how is it how is everyone kind of fixed for championship have you have you almost nailed down a team do you think or um no definitely not um you know every day at training is a chance for someone to put their hands up and girls definitely are um like I said it's going to be a very hard decision for Cahill and the management to pick a team and like we always say, like the first team starting out against Dublin could be completely different by the time we get to the latter stages of the group games. So yeah. it is really hard. You know, it, it all depends on, you know, how how the girls are going. You know, there could be niggles. There could be some girls putting their hands up, you know, other girls who might be performing league. You know, it, we really don't know. It's the joy of a competitive squad and girls who are pushing themselves every day at training. So um, no, definitely the team I wouldn't say is nailed down. Um, you know, we still have a good two uh, over two weeks left to go, and it's really ranking up now. All the yeah, all the um, I suppose the in house games and you know the training. So it's it's really enjoyable to see, and it's That's um, great. Yeah, That's great. yeah, and it yeah. is exciting. I mean, it's only like you said, <clears throat> is it two weeks away? The what yeah, days? Yeah. Yeah, over two weeks now, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because I, I was talking to Anya Kane and look, it is exciting and we're excited for the championship as well. And the fact that it is so wide open, we want Galway to win, obviously, but it's, yeah. it's great now that it's kind of like, you know, there's other teams involved in it. Um, I suppose um, all, all we can say kind of on the, the whole debate of the scores and thing that the promotion of Camogie is what we're trying to achieve by yeah. kind of on the Maroon and Pipe If you had one wish or if you were granted one thing that you could do with Camogie or Camogie Association or with the Galway team or with anything, what would it be? I'm giving you a wish now. I'm your genie today. What is it? Yeah. Um, One wish. Um, well, you really put me on the spot here now. Um, <laughs> one wish. I would love, no, no, I would love to play um a double header with, the hurling all in the final <laughs> class yeah, yeah that would be class it would be nice um just I suppose seeing the atmosphere there as well and that's not to say that the all Ireland camogie final I know um, yeah. isn't uh exciting but it just would be lovely and it would be great as well if there were Galway as well um in it so that would be a lovely thing to um that would for. be a nice one though yeah, <laughs> that's Brian Malai, so we will, we'll try and push yeah. that. Um, I suppose the last thing, Dinner, which I was going, I'm going to ask you a few quick fire. You have to give me, you have to put, you have to name and shame them now, so you do. Um, okay, <laughs> best dressed in the camp. Best dressed. Now, this isn't like with their scarts and stuff. Best dressed <laughs> out, uh, out in the <laughs> social scene. Um, I'd give that to, um, oh gosh, best dressed. All of rabbit is great now for. Okay, nice. Worst dressed. Worst. <laughs> oh, the best and worst here. Worst dressed. Oh gosh, I wouldn't want to name and shame anyone. Worst dressed. Um. Oh, I give that to myself. I wouldn't give it to anyone else. <laughs> okay, who is first to training? First to training. Um. First on the pitch, anyway, is definitely always Eva Donahue. So I could say she's first. Woman Eva. <laughs> and who is always late to training? I'd win this one anyway. Always, always late to training. Um, who can I say is always late to training? Um, 
I'm ru- running in with the, the socks <laughs> on and out. Running in socks. I give that to Evie and Barry. <laughs> um, okay, what would be your favorite cheat meal after a I game? Mean, or um, I know well, when my girls down, we love to get a nice basilico uh, pizza. Oh, yes, yeah, they, they sponsor you as well. Shall we yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, basilico meal, and I suppose the last one of what question will I put? Um, what question can we ask? Uh, three people you take to an island, or three things you take to an island if you were left on your own. Three things I take. I take. Yeah, to, or three um, people it can be. Three people. Ah, uh, three, three people. people to dinner in Basilico. Who is it? Oh, I'd have to take my club for it. <laughs> but um, I know I'd um, who would I have now for the, on an island? I feel like I'd bring Hanno, be Oh yeah, oh, I was there for the crack, build yeah. a boat or get us to safety. <laughs> With her knowledge, um, who else did I have? I'd bring, um, gosh, I'd bring uh, loads of people. Um, I suppose. I mean, it doesn't have to be Camogie like, players now. It can oh, be anyone. Oh, anyone. Anyone. Yeah. oh, gosh. Um, I'd bring Neve Annafee because I feel like she'd be able to build a boat and bring us back to safety. Um, who else did I have? Um, oh, gosh, maybe I'd have to bring maybe one of my sisters. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd have to bring the familia. Yeah. And maybe um, bring a phone. <laughs> phone yeah, that, that, that actually would have helped as well. <laughs> Thanks for um, joining me today because um, it is, it's great. And I'm delighted that you are a captain. You're going to be a wonderful captain. I hope your injury clears up and that you're you. ready in two weeks for championship and mm. the best to all the girls. And all we can say is, look at that we're we're shouting for you, the whole of Galway shouting for you and really excited for what's to come for Camogie and definitely for the championship ahead can't wait and best as captain yeah thanks a million for all those well wishes